Okay, in the last video, what we did was we were able to shoot the lasers, and then each time it shoots a laser, we were able to remove, did the collision detection, and then remove an alien enemy from the stage. Okay, so now we need to do a couple more things before we're done with that. A few more quick things. So, right after this alien dot remove movie clip, there's a couple other things that we can do. For one, we can also remove the laser that has um, shot the alien. So we could say this dot remove movie clip. And what that'll do is that will remove this, in this case, refers to the um, laser that's being moved. So, And how you can figure that out too is just if you're ever wondering what it is, just trace this and then you'll find out what this refers to in in the case of a function being called by another function etc so in other words if we if we do that and click here to begin and then start shooting stuff here and say you can see here that when I trace this it's referring to the lasers that are being sent out so if we write in our code um, Re this dot remove movie clip then the alien will be removed and also the laser that shot the alien will be removed from the stage. Another thing that will be useful is to maybe um, decrement the um, aliens. So you'll see that there's a variable that was created when we created the aliens. I'll show you this right here. So we created the aliens and then we said aliens alien count. And so we have this um, this property that we created, it's like a variable attached to the alien's movie clip here, or the alien's object. We have this property or this variable called alien count, and then we incremented it with each alien that was attached to the stage, right? So what we can do is we can decrement that, and then when we get down to zero aliens, then let's say the level is over, right? And that's going to be important. So what we'll do is we'll go up here back to our function, and we can say aliens dot alien count minus minus which will decrement by one so every time we shoot an alien with a laser every time a laser hits an alien we lower the alien count by one and actually that was all caps so I'm gonna put that in all caps here too okay aliens dot alien count. Let's just double check on that really quickly. Yep. Alright, so now if we go back up here, then the other thing we can do is we can trace aliens dot alien count to see what's if it's working essentially, right? Alright, let's try that. We'll put a semicolon right there. And so now, click here to begin, right, and we'll start shooting, shooting the aliens. Okay, and now we go back here and you can see there is trace to the output window, the alien count going down until it hits zero, right? So now we have a way of, in our game, when the alien count gets to zero, let's say, we could then have the level be completed and then we could go to the next level or something like that, right? So I'm going to comment that out. Just I'm leaving it there knowing that, hey, that worked, and now I'm going to comment that out. Okay, so the other thing that we could do is we probably want to have a score. So we'll say score, all caps, and let's say every time we kill an alien, we add... 10 points or something or 100 points okay and then if we had a movie clip called scoreboard dot score underscore txt for the text uh, box and then dot text right the text property we could set it equal to score right and so if we had that set up 
then we could do that. So let's set that up right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is for the score, I'm going to make a new layer above graphics. And so I'll just make a new layer and I'll call it score. And then I'm going to put a keyframe right on the game on keyframe, insert keyframe, and that's where we're going to place our score. And then what I'll do is, is I'll just make a quick text box, let's say, and call it score. There we go. And then I'll make another text box. And I'll set the score, let's say, to 100 to start with. And this text box, we're going to need to change a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll open up the property window and we'll change it to dynamic text. And we'll make it the, we need to make it the instance name that we already selected in our code. So score underscore txt, enter. So now this text box has that. Now we'll, it's aligned, the format is aligned right. That looks good. And I'm going to drag it open a little bit farther as the score gets bigger. You might need it a little bit bigger, right? And then this score, put a colon in there. So this text right here, if we select it, is classic text, right? And this text right here, if we select and go to the property window, is classic text, but it's dynamic text as opposed to this text box, which is static text. So this text box gets a instance name score underscore txt, right? Now what we can do is we can select both of these and then modify convert to symbol and we'll call the symbol mc underscore scoreboard, right? And we'll set the registration point for the upper left hand corner and then I'll put that up here, let's say for the moment, right? So there's the score. And then what we need to do is now that this is a movie clip, right? We can give it an instance name. So we'll give it the instance name score board and hit enter. So now that's set, let's just review to see if this is going to work. I have a movie clip here. Its name is scoreboard inside is two text boxes. I've got a dynamic text here and this is called score underscore txt or that's the instance name of the dynamic text box. I'm going to change the score to zero for right now. Okay, back to scene one and take this whole thing and place it up here and let's try it out. So we hit control enter and oh and before we do that what I want to do is one other thing. I want to go to the actions on the main timeline, click on the actions keyframe, and I'm going to go up to the variables and I'm going to add the score variable. Score equals zero. All right, so that we initiate that variable. Okay, so let's give that a test. So I hit control enter click here to begin and you can see there's the score changing nope well I'm seeing some numbers changing here but it's not doing what we want it to do so let's take a look at the code okay to fix this what I'm gonna do is I'm going to double click on the scoreboard and then I'm going to select this dynamic text box and everything looked good in the code and so all I have to do is select the the score text and I'm going to go here and I'm going to change it to anti-alias for animation to use device fonts and when I do that on this dynamic text box right use device fonts I keep it as classic text dynamic text now it seems to want to work perfectly so if I hit control enter click here to begin and start shooting these you can see that now the score increments correctly all right. Now this is probably related to the fact that I'm getting this message from Flash saying fonts should be embedded for any text that may be edited at runtime. Other than text 
with the use use device fonts setting use the text font embedding command to embed fonts so these fonts that we're using in our game right like this font right here um, which in this case is just Arial or and there's also some other fonts on some of these other timelines um, on some of these other um, uh, keyframes here so you can see there's fonts here and there's fonts here right so what I probably want to do is I probably want to embed these fonts and then I wouldn't have to use the use device fonts setting and then I won't get this output error to the window 